Um, I'd like to begin by relating a conversation that I had yesterday uh, with a colleague of mine. Now, she is an educator, she's an artist, she's a publisher, and she said, Nathan, when you're talking tomorrow, you have to remind everybody about how the arts are interwoven into every aspect of our society. And it's true, it's true. From the earliest dawning of community and civilization, the arts have played such a prominent role. And it's something that we, in the modern society, are really only just rediscovering. And that's what we're here to talk about today. We are here to talk about the arts and health. So, let me begin. Um, do we have any artists in the audience? Show of hands. Wow, look at this. It's fantastic. Okay, all right. So, um, what about somebody that, say, <clears throat> in the last month has been to a performance or a gallery? Yes. Great, fantastic. Uh, what about read a book, watched a movie? <laughs> arts touches everybody. So I guess the intersection between arts and health is really a growing movement and it is gaining significant support from educators, health practitioners, artists, government, the private sector. So worldwide, and I guess that's what we're here to discuss today. We are here to discuss what the state of play in this intersection between arts and health is. So, essentially, how can creative experiences, how can creative engagement help to create better health outcomes? So, there is a growing body of evidence that supports the strategies demonstrating the benefits of arts and health. Creative engagement for patients, and it is helping with acute or chronic illnesses. And how is it doing this? It is helping people cope with physical and cognitive symptoms. It is reducing stress. And for everybody, it is improving well-being. So I would like to now switch to a little case study, a Tasmanian-centric case study. And that is a wonderful, wonderful organisation called Inscape. And Inscape was a pilot program with the Royal Hobart Hospital. And it was about what we're talking about here, the intersection of art and health, about getting arts into the hospital, and in particular, the acute older person's ward. And so this pilot program was absolutely successful. They brought in musicians, they brought in visual artists, and the responses, it has gone so well that the pilot has been approved, has continued, they are encompassing the whole ward, and not just patients, but families but staff. And this is, if I go back to the original point that I made about how art touches every aspect of our society and how we, whatever walk of life we come from, whether we are a health professional or an artist, have to do our best to encourage, to promote, to collaborate, to gain the benefits for our community between art and health. Now, one point that I would also like to raise, and in any discussion that we have about the intersections between arts and health, there is growing number of, of case studies, of strategies, of benefits saying the arts can benefit the health industry. And it's true, it's absolutely true. But one point that I would like to put forward, a question that I would like to leave, is for the artists as well. And this is something that we need to focus on. How can the health sector help artists? because there is a growing crisis, mental health challenges, and these are questions that we need to ask. So, a little bit about me. My name is Nathan Tucker. Uh, I am an artist. My arts background is traditionally writing. Uh, I have worked in visual art. Uh, as far as writing, uh, I have worked in film, literature, game design, business writing. Anything that uses the written word uh, was really my game. But in later life, what I've also done is moved into community art. And that's been a very important step for me. Uh, a lot of life changes, a lot of things that happened to me really drew a sense of social responsibility. We have to care about the communities. So through community art, I started an organisation called Rising Phoenix. And Rising Phoenix was focused on young people. I'll come to this in a little bit. <clears throat> so. What I also do is I run a not-for-profit organisation in Tasmania called Rant Arts. And Rant Arts is a creative producer, we are facilitators, we are advocates. So Rising Phoenix, the organisation that I first started, was ideally just a platform 
to reach out to young people, and young people that, in particular, are facing significant social, economic, disability, disadvantage, homelessness. And it was a way that we could engage with these young people and show them that there is more to life, to the world, than the challenges that they are facing. Which is essentially the same crux that we're talking about with arts and health with patients. And the power of art, the power of art, if, I mean, I don't need to convince everybody here. We're here at a lecture about the intersection between arts and health. We are either artists, we have been to productions, we uh, read books, we watch movies, we know the power that art has. So through Rising Phoenix, I met a number of young people and a number of young people that were facing significant challenges. What I might like to do is talk about one young participant, uh, a young man by the name of Keegan from the northwest of Tasmania. Now, this young man has faced a number of traumas, some really difficult uh, life decisions had to be made. Uh, so when I first met him, he was an aspiring writer and poet. Um, I mean, he could turn a phrase beautifully and coming from a writing background, I saw such craft, I saw such potential. And I was very lucky in my arts practice that um, people took the time out for me, so that was really that responsibility to do the same. But then, after I'd met Keegan, he received a diagnosis for an eye condition. So not only was he facing these significant traumas, but he was about to lose the one thing that really gave him hope, that let him deal with the stress, that, that gave him a chance. And I, I cannot relate how heartbreaking it was to have those first conversations with this young man who has come from such a background and now is losing his sight. But art, triumphs. So through simply an audio recording, he can still write. It can be transcribed. And once this little mechanism was put in place, mind was blown and it was fantastic. So this is an example firsthand and one that's very close to my heart that we can see the intersection between art and health and the power it has on people, on participants, on patients. So I might now switch to RANT. And RANT is a fairly new organisation in Tasmania. As I said, we are a creative producer, we are facilitators, we are advocates. Uh, what we have is a very strong regional focus. We are the administrators of the Regional Arts Fund in Tasmania, a federal grant fund from the Department of Communications and the Arts, and we'll come to that a little bit later too. Through my organisation, Rising Phoenix, we have taken that on board through RANT and developed core youth programming under Rising Phoenix. And we have some fantastic, wonderful things coming up, especially dealing with those young people coming from areas in Tasmania like Ravenswood, facing severe socioeconomic challenges. And RANT is also an NDIS provider. And this is the one I want to spend just a couple of minutes talking about. So the NDIS is a fantastic program. There is a lot of scope and potential here. It is focused on long-term beneficial outcomes for the participants. And behind our NDIS programming, this is something that we have tried to focus on. We started with a call, call of interest, an expression of interest out to the Tasmanian public, to artists, bringing them in with this idea and with this strategy of developing something more than the traditional, here is a participant and here is a table with crayons or paint. What we want is we want something that is going to challenge them, something that is going to, like I was saying with Keegan, to give them that long-term benefit, that long-term engagement. So we have fantastic things like coding. We're setting up a gallery in Launceston that we will have exhibits and exhibitions where these participants in our NDIS programs can have that outcome, that show, can work towards long-term benefits. And this is the innovative strategy that can be applied when you bring health and arts together. You can reach people a lot stronger than traditional mechanisms, those that are failing. <clears throat> so what I want to talk about just before I finish up is art narratives, which is really what Rant is about. What is an art narrative? Well, a narrative is a story. But an art narrative goes a little bit beyond that. It's strategies, it's programs, it are things that support and engage individuals and communities across a number of social and cultural issues. 
So art narratives can use a multitude of forms. They could be music, visual art, dance, theatre, writing, or a combination. So through art narratives, which is essentially what all these programs are, you can engage with people. And essentially, we are talking about health and well-being, we are talking about engagement, we are talking about quality of life. So the argument put forward that should the arts and health intersect? You see this going on across the world. Let me take your attention to Canada. Let me take your attention to the United Kingdom, where there are some fantastic initiatives being put in. And we're not just talking about programs in hospitals or community programs. We are talking about health practitioners taking a prescription and going, I want you to go and do a dance class. I want you to go to a gallery. I want you to sit down and write a book. The benefits of this collaboration, I cannot say enough, and I think that anybody who experiences the arts, and we all have, as we've shown our hands, can recognise this. But that's not enough. It's also about partnerships, which is something that RANT does. RANT's focus is on connectivity. In Tasmania, uh, we have a very interesting uh, arts climate, and it's very important because Tasmania is all rural and remote. We're a regional island everywhere. So it's important that we have connections between organisations, between artists, between the community. Likewise, for health professionals, organisations, those collaborations give such scope and such potential. So for anyone considering putting forward a, a program, an idea, an arts health outcome, I urge you, the second question that you should ask is who should we be working with on this? Who can help? And it's these collaborations that really, in the arts sector, we thrive on them. It, it is really the core, in my opinion, I'm going to put that forward, I'm sure that you'll find that there are artists that will completely disagree with me, and that is beautiful. But collaboration is the essence of everything. It's the artistic practice, right? So for the arts and health, it is important that we look at who can we work with, what partnerships can we make, how can we reach more people, what mechanisms can we develop? So, we're coming up to um, our next speaker shortly, but what I would like to do now uh, is I'd like to basically put it over to the audience again, and I'd love to see if anybody has any thoughts or any examples that they have seen of the arts and health in action. Anybody? We have one here. Sorry, what's your name? Hi, I'm Paul Please. Great. I grew up in Brisbane, actually. My, uh, my father was Tasmanian, my mother was Victorian, and I think they needed uh, some form of neutral ground to raise me, so. Uh, yeah, so, so we have a fellow in the Sunshine Coast called uh, Paul Cowper. Uh, you may have heard of him. Great. He's Victorian, Australian, and Canadian. Uh, he's been doing a lot of art No, absolutely. And I guess that, uh, that discussion about mental health is something that we also really need to have. Uh, I mean, there is wonderful evidence for uh, art as a treatment for, you know, uh, chronic illness. But mental health, and especially, as I mentioned earlier, for the artists themselves, and this is something that we really need to start getting a narrative and a discussion going on. But a fantastic example. Do you have yeah, one there? Fantastic. We will be putting up images and photographs of our work from uh, case studies from our work in cancer. We do um, theatre. Great. Theatre making with uh, great socially inclusive practices and uh, social justice work and, uh, and also um, trauma-based therapy ideas and lots and lots of different ways and case studies that we see. No, uh, wonderful. And, and how are the participants? How is that working for the participants? Um, Yeah. 
I think I think that is a very important point, and uh, I'm sure I've I, I say it quite a lot normally. But those long-term outcomes, those long-term benefits, that is what's important. Uh, there is nothing worse than gaining, and I, I found this with Rising Phoenix, than gaining the trust, and it, it's something that is very difficult in many cases to achieve, to get that trust and then to sever it. It is devastating. So the potential uh, for health benefits, for well-being, comes from that long-term engagement, those long-term benefits. That is absolutely vital. Do we have any other? We've got one over there. Great. It's fantastic. Uh, I was at a uh, lunch earlier in the week and uh, from far north Queensland uh, was a wonderful, passionate uh, lady who was uh, organising a Facebook group for weavers and bringing uh, the Aboriginal community together. And I guess it's very important that we need to look at, uh, you know, the Aboriginal community. First Nation health outcomes are a priority for us. Women. RANT runs the Women's Art Prize Tasmania, and we have a very strong focus uh, on gender issues. So I guess making sure that voices that should be heard are heard, and that we are reaching those areas of the community that have the need. So that's a fantastic, wonderful, wonderful. And you're right, there is something about, firstly, about the actual making, the physical, the physical aspect of art, be it painting, uh, for me it's pen on paper, be it weaving a basket. There is just something that brings us together as well, which is really important. Uh, and it opens us up, you know. Uh, sometimes, I guess, uh, back to Phoenix, so that, that challenge of actually getting through the barriers and I, I'm sure the same would be for health professionals trying to uh, connect with a patient and it's got to be difficult it has to be very difficult so how do you do that art is the perfect icebreaker in my opinion so did we have any other wonderful examples anybody else that has seen a, a powerful or even just something simple that touches community or touches a patient Anybody? Yes, we have, we, we've we got one up the back. Oh, I guess you don't have experience, but you don't need experience, just something that you've seen. So I guess to wrap up, what I might uh, move towards is the Regional Arts Fund. And this is something that is very new for Rant Arts. Uh, it is a federal fund, but what we are seeing more and more with applications are, are projects that are focused on the community, which is the essential element of the Regional Arts Fund, as our next speaker will talk about. But it's fascinating to see these community health indigenous projects. And this is something I think that we've turned a page as a society. We have gone back and we've looked at the start, as I mentioned at the beginning, about art, about how at the earliest stages of civilization and community, we recognised the power of art. We recognised its connection to us, to the land, to each other. And we've forgotten it somehow. But now we're starting to just 
reimagine and see what we can do by intersecting art and all these other aspects of our society. So I guess what I might uh, do before I introduce our next speaker, um, one of the most amazing young people that I have, I don't know, I, I really, I'm lost for words. This young person um, has faced some significant health challenges, some gender challenges, and has overcome a very, very serious chronic illness. And I guess it is important going back to that long-term benefit, to that engagement, to not just being, as you said, a drop-in, drop-out project, but maintaining that connection. Because I guess this young person has overcome their disease, has overcome a horrible background, has finally become confident in their identity, which is important, and has now moved on to become an emerging artist, which is amazing to see. This particular young person is also now the co-director of a gallery, which I just warms the heart. I guess it's kind of important. And I think it's rewarding to actually see those examples of young people through Phoenix that we have connected with, we have focused on their well-being, we have used mechanisms through art to establish that, to give them the support and to see where they can go from there. So the Regional Arts Fund uh, is a wonderful opportunity to engage with communities 